How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and today I want to help you understand a basic concept when it comes to sizing a solar panel array for your home. Now I'm personally going to be doing a DIY setup. It's going to use 12 of these Helion panels that are 360 watts a piece. But even if you're not doing DIY, which is going to be most of us, you still need to understand a few basic principles when it comes to sizing the correct system for your home to make sure you're getting the right size system, not paying too much, but also getting the right size system so you can replace your monthly power bill or at least the electric part of that power bill. Why we need to understand that because the solar panels are usually denoted in how much power they can produce. Specifically, like I said, this is a 360 watt panel or 0.36 kilowatts of power. And then when it comes to this power bill, usually you'll have a trailing 12 month bar chart that's gonna show you how much energy you consume throughout that month because you need to know the average energy consumption to make sure you're sizing your system correctly. Now your energy consumption is gonna be based on kilowatt hours, just like the battery I'm sitting on is an EcoFlow Delta Pro and it is a 3.6 kilowatt hour battery. So it can store that much energy, and that is how I'm testing this overall system right now. I'm testing to see how much power is coming out of this solar panel, and I'm storing that energy into this EcoFlow using it as what's called a solar generator. So often electricity can be a little confusing, so it's better just to use an analogy between the difference of water flowing out of this hose and collecting in this bucket. So the solar panel behind me, power would be the similar to flow rate coming out of our hose. So this would be the power, let's say it's 345 watts, and then that'd be going into the battery, the EcoFlow behind me, and filling it up just like this hose is filling up the bucket. So then let's say clouds come in, and we're still getting flow out of the hose, and the panel would still be creating energy, but maybe it'd be less than 90 watts or 80 watts, so it's gonna take much longer to fill up the bucket, just like the panel would take much longer to fill up the battery. So understanding that relationship is critical. Now this DIY setup is only gonna be about four kilowatts, and that's not gonna offset my monthly utility consumption. What I did is I went to solarreviews.com and answering a few different questions, they sized out a system at 11.3 kilowatts, and then that was gonna offset my electricity consumption from the past 12 months on average. But I always like to double check the results so I can take that 11.3 kilowatts and that's gonna be the power produced in ideal conditions. Now you can reference a link in the description to a map that will show you across the United States, depending on where you live, how many peak solar hours are you gonna get per day? Just because the sun rises in the morning and then sets at night does not mean your panels are producing the maximum output all hours of any daylight. Really, there's only that core hours in the middle of the day. That can be as high as about six hours if you're in Southern California or over in Arizona, or as low as 3.5 hours in the Pacific Northwest, like in Seattle. So you could take that 11.3 kilowatts for my system, multiply it about 4.3 hours a day is where I'm at, and then that's what's gonna give you your kilowatt hours per day. So how much energy are you actually producing per day? Taking the power output multiplied by time, the number of those peak hours for the location that I'm living in, and then that's gonna give me my energy output. And on average, I would like that to be meeting or exceeding what I am currently consuming from the grid or my power utility today. So I do not recommend just because somebody shows up at your door, a solar salesman goes through your system, they might be sizing your system perfectly correct, but they also might be missing some things. So that's why it's good to have some of these basic concepts so you can actually understand what's being presented to you. Now I think something good is to have kind of an advocate in your corner. So maybe you have a relative or a neighbor that maybe knows a ton about solar and then they can help you through this process as you're building your own knowledge up. If you do not have that, I ran across a guy a couple weeks ago, Julian, and he has a YouTube channel just by his name, Julian Todd Borden, and he's trying to bring some transparency to the solar industry, which is a little bit easier said than done. 
but Julian has put out great information. Some of that is on financing and showing you how interest rates and different terms actually can be a bit confusing and maybe a higher interest rate might actually be a better choice for you. Now, Julian actually consults when it comes to solar. So you can reach out to him by his phone number or there's a link in the description to a small form. You fill that out and Julian or one of his few team members will reach out. They'll go through some of the basics like that power bill. So make sure you have your power bill ready to know your average monthly consumption. What is your average monthly energy consumption? But also help you understand what other factors are there that you need to consider and there are many factors that need to be considered to right size the system and get what you need for your home. And if you want an example of how critical it can be to also plan out your future consumption, check out this video right here over on our Everyday Home Repairs Help channel. This is where I'm going through the calculations of a Tesla Cybertruck and a Model Y being added as our daily driver and you will not believe how many panels I need just to cover the charging of those two vehicles. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.